guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here with a book review for you today. I haven't done one of these in a little while, so I am here to talk about Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. I just recently finished this. It came out in early January, so since it has been out for a while, this video will contain some spoilers, but I will be doing a sort of non-spoilery intro, and then I will tell you when to leave if you haven't read the book yet. This is a book that I've been looking forward to for a while. It is the newest from Alexandra Bracken, who wrote the Darkest Mind series. This is the first book in a new series. I'm not sure if it's a trilogy or not. This story is about a young girl living in modern day New York. She is a violinist, and she is about to have her debut performance at the Metropolitan Museum of Art when some things start to go weird. Um, the two most important people in her life are her mother, Rose, who uh, loves her and Etta knows that her mother Mother loves her but they have a sort of cool relationship. Her mother is always somewhat distant. And the other person in her life that is the most important is Alice who is a fairly elderly woman who is her violin instructor. So as soon as she starts to play in this performance she starts to hear this sound in the background that sounds like horrible screaming and then she also becomes very ill and almost faints. And so when she's carried off she ends up sort of being helped off by this person that she's never met before and sort of chaos sort of starts to erupt and in this chaos Alice, her instructor, is shot and then Etta is pushed through a passage by this girl that showed up and she ends up waking up back in time. So when she wakes up, the ship is actually in the middle of being boarded by a privateer ship, and one of the main privateers is a man named Nicholas, who we met in the preface, who is also a time traveler, and was going along with a man named Julian when Julian slipped off of a sort of cliff face and fell presumably to his death, but he sort of disappeared because when time travelers die in the past, they their bodies don't stick around, they end up disintegrating. So we find out pretty quickly that Nicholas has sort of been trapped in 1776 as punishment for Julian dying. Um, Nicholas is also of mixed race. He is half white and half black because his mother was a slave and his father was one of the members of this sort of extensive time traveling family, which is one of the things that we find out very quickly. Turns out there are time traveling families and Etta didn't know anything about this, but it turns out that she is from one of these families. Her mother took something from the head of the Ironwoods, who is the most prominent family left of the various time-traveling families, and basically he has taken Etta in order to get the artifact back, and her mother cannot do it because Etta is what's referred to as a blank slate, meaning that she is a time traveler who has not traveled, so there's no possibility of her like crossing her own timeline. So Nicholas and Etta end up teaming up because they both have their own reasons for needing to get this artifact back, and they end up traveling through a lot of different time periods and places in search of this um, sort of treasure hunt that her mom has given her clues to find. I am very generally speaking not actually a huge fan of time travel stories, so I gave this one a shot because it was Alexandra Bracken and I loved her Darkest Mind series so much, and I am so glad that I did because I often find that time travel stories can be a little bit gimmicky, and this one completely subverted my expectations, as I should be used to with Alexandra Breck, and she's always subverting my expectations, and there's just lots of really cool things about it, like for example, the Ironwood family, their sort of home timeline is 1910, which is odd because in most cases time travel stories are more science fiction based, so when you meet time travelers they're usually from the future, and so it was very cool to have a family that were time travelers, but their home timeline was in the past. I thought that that was really neat. So some things that I really liked about this story was one, I really liked the system of time travel because there are passages that link different time periods in different places, but you can't go to anywhere from anywhere. It's one specific time and place links to another specific time and place. Another thing that I liked was that the dates stay consistent. So like if one of them links to, you know, New York in 2015 and one links to say Damascus in like 1556, if you leave on September 21st in New York, you will arrive on September 21st in Damascus. And so the days stay consistent between all the different years and places. Another thing that I really liked was that not everyone could time travel, that this was a specific ability that only some people had, and then they also had this system of guardian set up. So people that can't time travel that then watch over the time travelers and stay in their timeline and sort of help them through these different 
you know, conflicting stories that might be happening. And of course, another thing that I really liked about this series was the attraction between Etta and Nicholas. I thought that it was written really well. Alexandra Bracken has a way of writing the physicality of attraction in a way that I really like and a way that I think really works and a way that makes me root for the couple in a way that, you know, I maybe wouldn't if it were written less convincingly. I really liked the way that she wrote the romantic pairing in the Darkest Mind series as well, so this was not exactly a surprise, but it was a definite plus. And I also liked that she wasn't afraid to sort of grapple with the morality of time travel, because Edda is new to all of this, she's learning as she goes, and she brings up the question of, you know, is it right to basically just be a tourist through all these different times and places, like the Ironwood family, is in um, revolutionary America at one point and there is a spy that was caught by the British and hanged and they were there basically on the date of the hanging and they did nothing because to them it wasn't their job to interfere and they didn't really feel like they had any business doing that and she's sort of questioning that mentality, that sort of bystander mentality of, oh, we're just here to watch. I also really liked the way that she describes all of the different places that they visit. She was very careful about researching what being in those places in those times might actually be like. Similar to how she writes Attraction, she focuses on the physicality of things, you know, the way that things would smell, the way that they would feel, the way that they would look and taste. And so I thought that that brought those eras to life in a really cool way. So that is the non-spoilery section of the review. Um, this next part will have spoilers, so if you haven't read the book and you want to, please stop the video now. So obviously this is first in a series, so if you have read the book you know that it ends on kind of a cliffhanger because where the hell is Etta? Like what happened that threw her out of the timeline and where's Julian? I also now in the spoilery section want to discuss Sophia a little bit because I think that she is a really interesting character because one of the things that I really like about Alexandra Bracken's writing is the way that she gives really convincing motivations for all of her characters, even the ones that are doing things that we don't necessarily approve of. Because you see in that first meeting with the head Ironwood, I've forgotten his name, the way when Sophia is sent out, Etta has that moment of, oh, she's a girl who wants to stay in and is always being sent out. And so the fact that she was raised in 1910, she was raised with these restrictions, and she knows that they exist, but she hates them, and she wants out of them so badly, I thought was actually really convincing motivation for her later actions. Now, I don't necessarily agree with her choice to give the astrolabe to the thorns, but I did kind of see where she was coming from, and I'm not totally sure that she deserved being beaten and left for dead. But now that she is with Nicholas and they're going to be forced to work together, I'm actually really invested in seeing what happens with Sophia because I trust Alexander Bracken to develop her more and I'm actually really excited about that. I'm also really interested in finding out more about Rose because obviously we only get the slightest glimpses of her life and I think that she is obviously a very strong-willed woman and she's had clearly a lot of things happen to her and so I am definitely interested in finding out more. So hopefully in that month when Nicholas and Rose meet up, we'll end up getting more information about her. I also just wanted to talk a little bit more about Etta and Nicholas in this spoiler section, which is I loved the way that they related to each other. I loved the way that she insisted on him being a partner rather than, you know, like a helper or a protector. And just the way that they spoke to each other felt really honest and real. And, you know, there's a moment where he says something about she doesn't need a protector, but he needs to be with her. I just felt like they're connection was really strong and real and grounded in a genuine appreciation of who the other person was. I believed in their regard for each other and particularly that scene in the jungle was amazing. So that is gonna be it for my review of Passenger by Alexander Bracken. Obviously I loved it. I am really looking forward to seeing what comes out next in this series. I will be buying it pretty much right away and I'm very glad that even though I'm generally not a huge fan of time travel series that this one lives up to the promise of the Darkest Mind series. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments if you've read it, what you thought of it, and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. And I loved the way that Nicholas called her pirate. I thought that that was actually really sweet.